Hey there guys, welcome to the first builder mini to follow. Today I'm going to take you all on a journey to see the steps I take to create the absolute pinnacle of every respective build there is, in the shortest amount of time possible and to ever be recorded. This is how we create the perfect granite mauler in less than a single day. I would also like to add that in this series I'll also follow up episodes in which I take them into the wilderness and display their own unique abilities, in respect to their particular build. Also, I would like to mention that there are some particular stats that we could have trained during this ordeal, such as Mage and Fletching, however they're meaningless at this stage of the build, so in future I'll show you how we're going to go about in training them. There we are lads, it took us nothing but 5 minutes to get into the RFD cutscene. Thank you Freddy for the wee bit of crafting experience. And here we are just trading everything over that we will probably need in the future. Here's probably the most crucial quest during the series. Alright, let's get a house built in Remington for easy access to the quest, which is Potion. Enchantment spells, here we come. Here's we tip. Take two sets of plague, so you can teleport from the chemist to Varrock. The plague will break, and you can retrieve another one from your bank, cutting big numbers of the quest. A lot of quests in IRS can be done in conjunction with one another and it basically means that my main is always going to be tailing me with all the supplies saving me a trip to and from the bank cutting an amazing amount of time off the build. Big win here boys, here's an example of how much time you'll actually save doing quests and diaries all in unison. This quest was started when I teleported here previously and now we're finished at basically no time cost. And finally, the combat begins. Cheers to the king, appreciate the spirit tree teleports brother. Here we get all the quests out of the way that grant thieving XP, so we should get about 23 thieving, leaving us with only 2 levels to train. You can cook these poison karam ones without any requirements and with an alt lighting fires while you one tick. This is the absolute fastest low level cooking method. We'll do this to about 40 cooking and we'll finish the rest off through quests. If you guys are interested in a raw uncut version of a myth glove speedrun as opposed to an entire build, let me know and I'll get onto it. Bugger, forgot to record that one but there's 41 attack and 20 thieving.
26 agility, that's going to help us around the game and get us closer to Horror from the Deep. What an absolute calculated clutch from this rat. Perfect, that's 44 attack and 32 agility. With a boost, we can get onto Horror from the Deep. And that's 23 thieving, only two more levels to go. Take a gander at this fella. Auto clicking the pipe, you only get 10 experience every time you go through that. Well, all right, fair enough. One dinosaur down, one to go. Wonderful, that's 20 range. Few more bits and bobs and we'll be on to range training. That's the climbing boots unlocked. And for those who didn't know, you can whack this thing 10 times for 500 attack experience. Alright, let's turn this kitten into a cat while we get 60 range. Firstly, I'd like to say well done to Nocturnal RS for finding this spot post-patch. It really is one of the best places to train. It's cool that someone went out of their way to find something like this, as I used to utilize this spot before the Zaya rework, and did some research into some other spots like this. Using this cannon spot, you can expect up to around 50 to 55k experience per hour, with absolutely no crashes, unlike ogres which are packed at all times. Right, with a completion of 60 range, we'll move on to Recipe for Disaster. Shadow of the Storm out of the way, we'll get on with the rest of the requirements for RFD. I've just picked up an extra rock cake during the quest as I'll use it for the fire cape that's up and coming. Okay, thank god we didn't burn that. By the way guys, if any of you are interested in checking out our clan chat and you have a build ranging from a Skiller all the way to the likes of a Pure or Zerka, come check us out at Limited CC. Perfect, that's only one more part to go.
And finally, after multi-questing and training stats during and through quests, we've finally completed Mithril Gloves, alongside all other prominent quests needed to create the perfect Granite Mauler build. At this stage, everything was ready, and all I needed to do now was get 65 range for the Third Age Bow, which is the best offensive bonus weapon needed for the fight caves at such a low combat level. This particular spot seemed to work out well for me until I ran into the problem of the bandit that spawns under me, which gives all the other NPCs with the same identification the ability to aggro me, which isn't the greatest idea with the amount of risk that I had in shins on me. With a little poking around I came up with a spot which completely blocks all NPCs while aggroing completely towards my main with vestment gear on. You can gain up to a whopping 90 to 110k per hour here at such a low range level, which would more or less be the same experience per hour as skeletal monkeys, all without the requirements to get there in the first place. And there we go lads, 65 range and 45 HP, I reckon it's time to tackle the infamous fight caves. Thanks guys for tuning in to episode 1 of this short mini-series I'll be doing. If you enjoyed what you've seen, please drop me a like and a subscription as it helps motivate me to further develop my videos and keep me actively posting. In the following episode, we'll be further perfecting the build, then taking her out into the wilderness to get some well-deserved kills. Thanks again guys, and as always, take it easy.